In this video, we're going to go over the ozonolysis reaction of alkenes. So let's start with 3-hexene. What's going to be the major product if we add ozone and dimethyl sulfide? What do you think? So ozone will cause this molecule to split in half. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get two carbonyl groups. So basically, once you split it in half, added oxygen to each side of the double bond. Now, if we redraw it, it will look like this. So these two products are the same. So we get propanol as our final answer for this product. Now, let's try some more examples. So what if we had, let's say, a very similar structure, but there's a carbon there. What's going to happen? So let's use ozone again. Instead of dimethyl sulfide, you can use zinc and acetic acid. It will have the same effect. So I'm going to draw what I have left over after it's been split into. So this is what I have. And now all I need to do is add an oxygen atom. So keep in mind there's a hydrogen atom here. And so you could see that I have a ketone and an aldehyde. After I split it, if this carbon is primary, it's going to be an aldehyde. If it's secondary, it's going to be a ketone. And so I can redraw the products like this if I want to. So I have two butanone and also propanol as my answers. So this time I got two different products. Now let's try some more examples. Go ahead and predict the major product of this reaction. Dimethyl sulfide, you might see it like this. If you see ME, it's a methyl group. So once again, we're going to follow the same trend. So if you start with a ring, you're going to get a single molecule as opposed to two molecules. If you start with a chain, then you'll get two or more molecules per double bond. So we're going to draw everything the same way, but we're just going to break the double bond into two parts and then just add oxygen. So what we have here is a hydrogen, and so this is going to be a hydrogen. Now let's redraw this. So this is going to be carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So let's start with the aldehyde functional group at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. On carbon 6, we have a ketone. And so you can count it to make sure that we have the right answer. So this is the product for this reaction. That's all you need to do here. Now let's try another example. So go ahead and react this molecule with ozone followed by dimethyl sulfide. So go ahead and try it. So I'm going to follow the same process as before. And that is by splitting the double bond into two parts. And then add in an oxygen atom to both parts. And so we have a hydrogen atom here. I'm going to put that here to indicate that this is an aldehyde. Now let's count the longest chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 carbon atoms. Now let's redraw. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now attached to carbon 3, there's a methyl, and then there's an ethyl on 4, and on 6, we have a carbonyl group. 
And just to make sure we did it right, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. And so this is the product of the reaction. Now let's try another example. So let's say we have a double bond here and another one here and here as well. So let's use ozone again. And this time let's use zinc and acetic acid. Go ahead and predict all the products that can be formed in this reaction. So everywhere we see a double bond, we need to split it into two parts. Now keep in mind, there's two hydrogens on this carbon atom, and there's a hydrogen here and another one here. It's always good to place those hydrogen atoms to tell if you're going to get an aldehyde or a ketone. So let's begin. So let's start with the ring. So we're going to have two oxygen atoms there. And then we have another double bond in this region. And so that's going to be a ketone. And here we have a hydrogen, some at this point right now, or this area. And then there's another double bond here. And then we have another oxygen facing that ketone. And so these are the three products that we have. So everywhere there's a double bond, all I did was I split it into two carbonyl groups. And so here we have an aldehyde and the ketone. You could see that. And in this area, we also have another aldehyde and the ketone. So these are the products of this reaction. And then you can redraw it if you want to. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first product is simply formaldehyde, which looks like this. And then the second product has four carbon atoms. So we have a ketone and an aldehyde. Now let's redraw this molecule. So I'm going to start with the aldehyde again. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's the first carbon, second, third, fourth, fifth, six. On carbon six, we have a ketone, and then seven, eight, nine. On carbon nine, we have a ketone. So it's always good to double check to make sure that you counted it right. And so these are the three products of this reaction. Now, what if you're given the products of the reaction? So let's say we have a ketone and an aldehyde. How can we determine the original alkene that made those two products? So what I like to do is draw the carbonyl groups facing each other. And then simply just connect them. See, what you want to do is get rid of the two oxygen atoms and connect the two molecules by means of an alkene. And so our answer should look something like this. And that's it. So now we just need to redraw it. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so we have a 6 carbon chain, a methyl and carbon 2, and the alkene is between carbons 2 and 3. And so we have 2 methyl, 2 hexene as our starting material. And so that's how you could find the original alkene that was used to make these two products.
For the sake of practice, let's try a similar example. So go ahead and draw the alkene that was used to make these two products. So let's follow the same process. Let's begin by drawing these two molecules in such a way that the carbonyl groups are facing each other. And then replace what you see here with an alkene. And so the starting material looks like this. And that's all we need to do. And so that is the alkene that was used to make these two compounds. So let's try one more example. So what do you do if both of the carbonyl groups are in a single molecule? So we know that the original alkene must have been a cycloalkene. So what I like to do is count from one carbonyl to another. So this tells me that my original molecule is a 5-carbon ring. And so here's the double bond. And that's going to be carbons 1 and 5 because that's where the carbonyl group is. So I'm going to make this 1, and this is going to be 5, which means this is 2, 3, and 4. So attached to carbon 1, I have a methyl group. And attached to carbon 5, I have a, an isobutyl group. And so this is my answer. That's all I need to do. And so now you know how to find the original alkene in a ozonolysis reaction.